Ah, Zeus, you were so promising back in the day. Freeing your siblings, overthrowing your tyrannical father Kronos, casting the Titans into Tartarus, becoming Lord of the Heavens, and ruling the ancient world with wisdom you got from absorbing your first wife. That's such a strong start for the heroic king of the gods. And sure, you married your sister, but like, that was traditional for gods. It could have been way worse. And then you spent centuries screwing with humanity, punishing Prometheus for trying to help them out, commissioning Pandora specifically to screw them over, and systematically having sex with as much of the female population as you could manage by any means necessary. I mean, you're the king of the gods, lord of thunder, you have a killer aesthetic. I want you to be cool, you have so much going for you. But there's only so much I can respect a god who routinely turns himself into livestock specifically for the purpose of boning unsuspecting humans. Some days I just really want to see you get your ass kicked. So in the early days of ancient Greece, Zeus and the fam had just overthrown Kronos and cast the Titans into Tartarus, and by all accounts, Gaia wasn't too happy about her last batch of children getting slam dunked into the underworld sewage outflow pipe. Now, because the modern image of Mother Nature is generally positive and nurturing, it can be easy to forget that personality-wise, Gaia covered all of nature. You know, storms, volcanoes, earthquakes, landslides, there's plenty of nice, happy tree stuff happening on the side, but in Greek mythology, Gaia mostly makes monsters, and this story is no exception. With Tartarus itself as the father, Gaia gives birth to the monstrous Typhon, a kaiju-sized eldritch abomination with loads of heads, flaming eyes, and just a whole bunch of snakes. Now, Typhon is unironically the biggest threat in Greek mythology. While primordial titans like Gaia and Uranos were physically bigger, they also had a lot less agency and didn't tend to directly oppose the gods. And while there were monsters aplenty, most of them were small enough that they could be taken down by one hero at a time, with maybe the bare minimum of divine assistance or the occasional flying horse. Typhon is in a weight class of his own. Physically huge and incredibly powerful, Typhon is more more like a force of nature than a monster. He also plays into the Greek mythological succession cycle, where each ruler of the cosmos is successively overthrown by a new generation of gods. With Kronos defeating Uranos and Zeus defeating Kronos, Typhon is next in the lineup to take down Zeus and become the new ruler of the world. But before he starts off on any of the god fighting, the first thing he does is he goes and shacks up with the monstrous half-beautiful nymph, half-giant snake called... Echidna. It's not her fault, guys, it was her name first. Anyway, Typhon and Echidna have a bunch of monster babies, including the Chimera, the Hydra, the Sphinx, the Nemean Lion, and Kerberos. With that out of the way, and plenty of antagonists established for future generations of heroes to fight, Typhon marches towards Olympus to smack down some gods. Now, in a couple versions of the story, the Olympians are so spooked by this fire-breathing Godzilla-sized snake monster that they shapeshift into animals and run away all the way to Egypt, which is a little random until you notice that Artemis turns into a cat, Hermes turns into an ibis, Zeus turns into a ram, and yeah, basically, this is a little bit of early syncretism. It's specifically the ancient Greek explanation for why the Egyptians worshipped animal gods. As far as they were concerned, Bast was Cat Artemis, Thoth was Ibis Hermes, Amun was Ram Zeus, etc. Pretty neat. But Zeus waits just long enough for the Egyptian artists to get his good side before turning back and hucking some lightning bolts at Typhon, driving the monster back before getting in close with an adamantine sickle. But when Zeus goes in for the kill, Typhon surprise grapples him and turns the tables by ripping out his tendons like he's a misbehaving chicken leg. So with Zeus's strength now roughly on par with a spaghetti plate, Typhon tosses him into a cave along with all of his loose tendons, and sets the half-beautiful nymph, half-enormous f*** you dragon Delphine to guard it. Surprisingly, she's apparently got no relation to Echidna, the other half-lady, half-snake thing in the story. Anyway, then Typhon wanders off to presumably do giant monster things like knocking over buildings and breathing fire. But luckily, unlike every other overthrown king of the cosmos, Zeus doesn't need to languish for long, as Hermes and Pan sneak into the cave, retrieve his tendons, and restring him like the world's horniest ukulele. Now back at full power and presumably very annoyed, Zeus charges off after Typhon and a truly epic battle commences. Earthquakes, Volcanoes, fire everywhere, thunderbolts and lightning, very, very frightening me, you know, the works. Eventually, Zeus's thunderous assault wears Typhon down, and when he tries to run, Zeus responds with his characteristic sportsmanship and drops a mountain on his head. This produces the famous Mount Etna, one of the world's most active stratovolcanoes, and supposedly also the home to Hephaestus's forges, which... Seems like a bit of a workplace hazard, I'm not gonna lie. Takes a lot of work to beat out the inherent dangers of working in an active volcano, but an imprisoned mega kaiju in the next room over manages it pretty handily. Anyway, Typhon's imprisonment is used to explain why Mount Etna is always getting the rumblies, and he's also credited with being responsible for the world's ill winds that cause bad weather or bring storms. And fun fact, despite what one might assume, this is not actually the origin of the word typhoon, since while the etymologies are similar, typhoons don't happen in Europe, only in Asia. The word itself seems to have originated with the Chinese word for big wind, then been reinforced by the Arabic word for cyclonic storm, and finally, lightly spiced with the Greek word Typhon when it made the jump into English. I think the lesson here is that the real monster was the English language all along. Black hole sun, won't you come and wash away the rain? Black hole sun, won't you come, won't you come, won't you come?